Hey guys, Trooster here. I just thought I'd show you the 767-300 sim as it stands today. Still a long way to go, but um, taking shape nonetheless. I currently have the sim in a single garage. I'm standing right at the uh, the wall, the roller door at one end. So you can see there is a reasonable amount of room, enough to play with. The uh, the width of the uh, the room is about 13 feet, or about 420 centimetres. So it should be enough to have some uh, projection and visuals later on. Um, you might be able to see it's not the, the best of builds, but it certainly um, it certainly does the job. By the way, I've built this entire sim using nothing but that and that. A jigsaw and a drill. And of course, um, paint and you know screwdrivers and, and, and the obvious stuff but they're the two main tools that have built this entire sim so we come back around here and you can see it's starting to take shape Sorry if the video doesn't come out too well, I'm taking this on a digital camera, not actually a video camera. So it's just um, 6mm MDF all the way around, painted in the off-white colour that Boeing has. Just held on with screws. Six mil MDF for the uh, front panel as well. And six mil MDF for the uh, instrument cover, small bezels. The throttle, you can see, is actually a Satec throttle. It's two of them put together. And then I've attached, I've just made these levers out of wood and MDF and attached them to the actual Satec levers. Speed brake and of course flat lever. Down the track I'll get a proper throttle system for the 767, but this will do for now. I'll just use the bottom switches down here for the engine start, and reverse down here at the moment. Reverse will eventually be over here. I'll have a micro switch in here, and uh, the levers onto here, so we'll pull back here for reverse eventually. But they do give quite a good feel for now. The Satec uh, yoke, quite a nice yoke. A little bulky, but that's okay, it does the job. And when uh, you're seated, that's the sort of view you get about there, so you can still see, um, and all you have to do is raise your head a little bit to see the entire navigation display. I've just bolted that on and made a small stand for it. Satec rudder pedals which do the job nicely. I've only got a, um, a couple of side panels there at the moment because I've, uh, because of the room in the last house I wasn't able to have the angle of the side window Normally you see the angle here, the angle of the real 767 is actually out about here which enables you to have a lot more room down the side but uh, that'll do for now. The overhead, 
it was uh, quite easy to make and quite fun to make. Certainly not um, the real thing, and certainly not Cory switches, but this will certainly do the job. As you can see, I've just used uh, push button switches off eBay. These are latching switches with a single LED. Push on, push off. So at the moment that bus tie is off, push it on, it latches, the LED will come on, release. Lighting switch, that sort of thing. And of course eventually, rotary switches, which will go here. And I will eventually have buttons across here as well. I was thinking with these buttons here, even though um, they're supposed to be for the cabin call, I might actually use them for FS passengers. So when I press that, I can feed the passengers, press that button there, watch the movie, press that button, um, and they can have some drinks, that sort of thing. Of course, I'll leave that one for ground call. When I press that, I can ask for a pushback. So quite effective for what I need. I just made a mock-up compass to uh, sit in the front there as the real 767 has. Just to add a little bit more realism. And of course the front plate that the 767 has there as well. Go for it, MTP to start with will go in here and um, I'll eventually have two nabs go in here as well. buttons for the, uh, the status screen plus uh, recall and of course test button various systems and the good old trusty gear lever which I made in a day you can see uh, just made by uh, aluminium painted with a switch down in here. Pull the lever out, come all the way down, locks into the down position. And obviously when taking off, pull out, up into the up position, and then you can pull it out, go into the off position to release the pressure in the system. You can see the cutouts. I've taken the bezels off the actual monitors. That way the screen can fit a lot closer to the MDF. Else, sometimes what you get, you can see that the that one I haven't taken the bezel off, and the screen sits quite away from the actual wood. So it leaves a little gap between the instruments and the wood, which is, is still perfectly flyable. It looks good, but it just looks better when it's a lot closer. So there you have it. Eventually, um, of course, I'll have all these as real and uh, the master caution lights up there. And I'll have the, uh, the entire lot covered over eventually as well. Not a lot of room to play with back here, the washing machines and stuff, but anyway, I might have uh, that extended out a little bit here and perhaps a curtain or something there to start with and of course you can see at the front I plan eventually using the Fold 7 software and um, triple head to go have a nice big curved screen across the front here around to about there so uh, at the moment what I'm looking at is having a nice big curtain across the front here out the front having a uh, projector about there bouncing off a mirror coming straight back this way so as you can see this entire area here will be where the, the visuals will be for now so um, there you have it that's where I'm up to at the moment